Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Now, do you know the allure of this? Well, actually not this. This is a Krugerrand. But really, it's my shine, the shiniest penny I have. Now, I think a lot of people get distracted by the shiny penny. You know, the, um, the brand new strategy, the get rich quick, the, oh, look, someone's doing that over there and it looks amazing. I'm going to jump into it. Uh, and if you've ever been distracted by the shiny penny or been overwhelmed or juggled too many things at once or spread yourself too thin, then you need to watch this video. I'm going to do a detailed deep dive into why you do it and how to get rid of the curse and actually how to develop a lasting one, two or three strategies that will make you a decent amount of money. So first off is this shiny penny syndrome, the allure of this beautiful thing. Oh look, make me rich really quickly without any work. Ooh, uh, entrepreneurs, generally we have this as our curse. It's our blessing and our curse. As an entrepreneur, usually you love to start new things. You love creativity, excitement, building things, starting things, you know, the, um, the vision. And you hate and get bored of finishing it or doing it for years and years and years over and over or systemizing it or, you know, or making it uh, so boring that it's easy. So um, if you suffer from any of these, then I've got 12 points, which I think will really help you. Before we do that, I want to let you know that I have this too. This is normal for an entrepreneur. Don't beat yourself up about it. You know, don't compare yourself to everyone else thinking that, you know, they're amazing and you're terrible because um, it, it normally manifests itself in you're doing too many things at once, number one. Number two, you're spreading yourself too thin. Number three, you're spinning too many plates. Number four, you start a load of things but never finish a load of things. Number five, you're not giving the strategies that you've already started enough time to mature. Number six, you maybe have unrealistic expectations. You thought it should have been easier, quicker, better, faster. Number seven, you compare yourself and the results to others that you perceive are doing better, even though you don't actually really know how they're doing. You know, people post on social media, look at me, I've made millions in five minutes, this is really easy, when in reality, it probably isn't. Uh, and number eight, you know, you see the, green, the grass on the other side is much greener when in fact um, grass only becomes green when you water it here and you nurture it and fertilize it right beneath your feet rather than as presuming it's greener on the other side. All right, great. So here are the 12 points I think that will really help you. Uh, number one is most entrepreneurs who've made anything have started something, stopped, started, stopped, started, failed, started, failed, started, stopped, started, stopped, started, started succeeded. Uh, and it's normally not their first thing. So if you're juggling a load of things, whether it's different property strategies or different businesses or all the different cryptocurrencies, that's normal. Just accept that it's normal uh, and, you know, don't beat yourself up. Just keep pushing through until you find something that works. Number two is... I created a model, when I say I, of course, my mentors have helped me and I, I'm normally just redesigning things that other people have taught me, of 70, 20, 10. So 70, 20, 10 is 70% of your time on your primary strategy, 20% of your time on your secondary strategy, 10% of your time on your future strategy or on your research. Because this leads us to number uh, three, which is Doing only one thing can be really risky. Now, some people say you have to do one thing, focus on it forever to get good at it. That's what all successful people have done. But in reality, they haven't. Because, for example, Apple uh, had computers, phones. They had Apple Pay. They had Apple Music. You know, they had iTunes. So Apple didn't actually do just one thing. Uber now have more products, Airbnb are creating more products. So generally what happens is you start with one thing, you put a lot of your time into that, but then you have a spin-off thing and a spin-off thing. One, because opportunities arise in different areas. Two, because entrepreneurs need to create and build new things. The times change, markets change. What you started 10 years ago doesn't work now. Or, you know, you sell that part of the business and start this part of the business because, you know, business is like water. It's always moving. So that being said, number four is if you do 10 things, you know, you're, oh, I want multiple streams of income. So I'm going to start, 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 start 10 streams now you never get anywhere. If you drill one fifth of the way down that oil well, then give up one fifth of the way down that oil well and give up one fifth of the way down that oil well and give up and so on, you never strike oil. So to balance doing one thing but risking it going wrong or becoming obsolete with doing 10 things where you never get deep enough on all 10, 
I believe having your 70, 20, 10, three strategies maximum at any one time. You focus 70% of your time on your main one, that might be property. 20% of your time on your second one, that might be e-commerce. 10% of your time on your third one, that might be cryptocurrencies, for example. Now, that will move and change over time. And some of the, the points I've got later on will address this. All right. So number five then is, yes, you should always keep learning. Some people are like, oh, well, I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to learn anything else because I've learned one thing and I've got to keep doing that forever. Um, but then others are like, I want to learn everything. I want to learn everything. And then they're like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. What do I do? I've got too many things. I'm confused. So you want to balance those forces um, because, you know, being a startup entrepreneur is great in that you start things because the balanced opposing force is you never stop. You never finish anything uh, and, and on the contradictory force is you, you're good at doing one thing for a long, 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 long time, but maybe it takes too long or maybe you miss opportunities. So you're balancing these opposing forces. So now my point five is keep learning, keep educating yourself, keep feeding your mind, you know, but focus on your 70, 20, 10. Um, you know, for example, I'll learn something new. You know, for me, the most recent thing I've been learning about a lot is cryptocurrencies. But I'm not going to go and sell progressive property or, you know, completely stop doing all my training businesses that at one point did nearly 20 million pounds in a year just to go into this new crypto thing that's really exciting. That would be dumb. Um, so I just spend about 10 percent of my time learning cryptos. I've got a partner. You know, we, we did a crypto course, created a crypto course together. Um, so you're balancing all of this. Number six, then, is most decent strategies work. So you look at someone else's strategies and you think that's easier. You look at ones that you've done and you thought they didn't work. Well, in reality, those opposing forces aren't the, um, you know, aren't the truth. The truth is if you did property, whether it's commercial or rent to rent or you do option agreements or you do e-commerce on Spotify, uh, Shopify, sorry, or Amazon or Etsy or whatever, they all work. eBay, they all work. Uh, most cryptos will work if you do, if you make them work, if you learn about them, if you get deep on them. So have you in the past started things and then not finished them and then thought, oh, this is better. I'll start this uh, and then not finished it. And then you thought, oh, that'll be easier and then started this and not finished it. Well, all of those strategies you did before probably would have worked if you do. So it worked as long as it's not a scheme or a scam, you know, or something that's just really in a small wormhole window of opportunity, but in a year it'll be obsolete. As long as it's something that will work for the long term that's proven, which most business models are, let's be honest, um, then it works if you do. So you need to be self-aware and look at, have you been jumping from place to place to place, expecting it to be easier, faster, better, without putting the work in, without getting a deep level of knowledge, without becoming the best at it, without giving it time to mature, without building systems and processes and hiring people and going through the dip and, you know, the difficulties. You know, this is normal. We all go through this. All right, then number seven is... Um, you must give each strategy long enough to mature. If you planted a seed and came back the next day and said, where's my fucking tree? Then, of course, that's not likely to work out. So you need to give things long enough to mature. You need to drill all the way down to the well. You know, if, you, if you're um, mining for anything, digging for anything, getting one fifth of the way there is useless. But also getting 95% of the way there is useless. You do all the work for none of the results. So you need to make sure that you are giving each strategy that you implement, that you learn, that you systemize long enough to mature to bear your fruits. You can't just plant the seed and expect to get the tree. OK, then point nine is if you've been doing something and it started to get results, you should systemize it. You should get virtual assistants, have PAs, managers, your processes in place and then implement the next strategy. So a lot of people do start, they make something work, like let's say normal buy-to-let property, and then they go, oh, commercial property, oh, that's really exciting, I'm gonna go into that. They buy a massive building, they take their eye off the ball of their buy-to-lets, the buy-to-lets start to fail, because they assume that because they made it work, it would continue to work. They get distracted by this new, bigger opportunity, it's more risk, that goes wrong, and then they lose both. So if you follow the 70-20-10 model, which I detail a lot, by the way, in my book, Multiple Streams of Property Income, I talk about 70-20-10. So let's say property, e-commerce, crypto. It's just as a random example. It could be many things. Um, you, you do 70% of your time on your main strategies of property. You build it so you start to get some success. You're 20% of your time in your e-commerce. And of course, that's a bit slower, but you're getting there. What if you want to scale up your e-commerce? Well, you have to systemize your property business. So you have to make, for example, get a good letting agent. You have to get good manuals and processes written. You have to get a manager in place to manage the agent. 
Um, you know, you might need good CRM software, etc. Once you've systemized your 70 thing, which is say property, you can then scale up your 20 thing, which is say e-commerce and that turn that into a new 70. Uh, and property, your older 70 then can get systemized so that you can move your time across. Uh, and, and now you have four strategies because you have your 70, which was is now systemized, your 20, which becomes your new 70, your 10 becomes your new 20, and then something new can become your uh, new 10. And you know, like um, most millionaires have on average three streams of income. Income. Some have five or seven. You know, you look at, um, I don't know, let's say a, a footballer who's also got branding and sponsorship deals, you know, and they may have, um, you know, license agreements and income from different sources. Well, for 20 or 30 years, they were just a footballer. Um, and then when they finish footballing, they may be going to commentary or management. They write books. So they have multiple assets, but they had to build it on that one main asset first. So this leads us on to the next point then, which is staff, management, systems and processes and partnerships. These enable you to build more income streams, Not because if you're doing them all, then you can't build them. So I often say, um, go to a partner and look at how I can partner with them, like I partner with Siam on the cryptocurrencies, because um, it enables me to get into that space. He has more knowledge. He has more experience. I've got a market and I've got a community and an interest. Uh, and so then, you know, we're able to leverage each other's skills. Uh, and I'm not spreading myself too thin because I'm not having to go and start again and do all the work and get all the knowledge and experience all over again. OK, the next point, um, which I think we're on number 10 ish, is never compare yourself to anyone else other than for motivation and inspiration. If you look at someone else going, oh, they made billions in cryptocurrencies. Yeah, because they invested four years ago when it was twenty dollars and now it's seventeen thousand dollars or whatever. You know, you, you, you can't uh, go back in the past. You look at them and think it was easy. But, you know, maybe they were in the world of trading and Forex and, and you know, and currency for 15 years before they got into cryptos. And they made it look easy. But actually, you didn't honor you know, everything that they did in their life. You look at, um, remember Susan Boyle when she opened her mouth and sung, and got tens or hundreds of millions of YouTube hits and became a sensation. Seemed like overnight, but none of us knew how long Susan Boyle had been singing for. So don't look at everybody else thinking they've got it easier, faster, better. Compare yourself to them. Diminish yourself thinking that you're no good because they make, they make it look easy and you make it look hard. You just have to focus on what you're doing. And if you're going to compare yourself to anyone else, do it for motivation and inspiration only. Because that's the easiest way to derail yourself from your vision, your mission, your cause, is to deposition and depedestalize yourself by over-pedestalizing someone else. That isn't wise. All right, I'm going to wrap up in a minute because I can see my battery is going and my memory is going. Not my memory, the memory on my phone, although that often goes. So if you leverage PAs, VAs, managers, staff, outsourcers, um, you know, these online platforms, then you're able to achieve more in less time. So don't do it all yourself. You're going to, you know, if you spin every plate and have to manage every plate when it wobbles, of course, you're going to have too many plates on the go. Whereas if you spin a couple yourself that you're good at, you leverage other people to spin a couple and you have a bit of a share and a partnership in that. Then you get three, four, five or six income streams um, without, you know, trying to do 48 hours work in a day, which, of course, is impossible. So finally, then things take time but they don't take a lifetime. So we need to balance these forces of impatience and patience, of short-term and long-term thinking, of you know, naivety and maturity. So it's good to be naive. It's good to be relentlessly impatient when you start an income stream because that gives you the hunger, the motivation, the speed, the relentlessness to go out and get it you know, built. But then that turns against you when you're like, oh, I want to be a billionaire and I've been doing this six months and I should be a billionaire and this isn't, this isn't right and this is unfair and this doesn't work, sod this and you go and start something else. So we're balancing these two forces. So I would say things take time, but not a lifetime. Give them time to mature and then build your own self-awareness. What do you love? What, do you, what are you good at? You know, you've probably juggled four, five, six income streams. Most entrepreneurs have. You've probably failed at a few or some are working, but you just... Um, put them on ice or you mothballed them or you got distracted, you could go back to them. So each time you develop a new stream or you get distracted or you implement a new strategy or you're doing a co new course, build yourself awareness. Okay, so what do I love? What am I good at? Where do I keep succeeding? Where do I keep failing? So what do you love? You love the newness. You love the exciting, you, the excitement. You love the vision. You love starting it, building it, but you don't love finishing it and developing it and maturing it. So get a partner or say yes but a bit later. So you can just do this thing you're already doing for a few more months until it works. 
or um, you know, get sort of different members of your team who've got opposing skill sets, who like creating systems and processes, and you know, who like um, taking something that's already working and then developing it and improving it and maturing it. And which some people love to do, by the way, but it's not usually entrepreneurs. You know, starters and finishers are often different points of these personality profiling scales. All right, so let me sum this up for you because I think it's important to summarize it. Um, it's normal to have these um, shiny penny. Let me show you my shiny gold penny. It's normal to get allured by the new and exciting for an entrepreneur. We're great starters, we're often bad finishers. We need to build our self awareness and our emotional mastery. Um, this shiny penny or this de desire for something new can manifest in number one, doing too many things at once. Number two, spreading yourself too thin. Number three, spinning too many plates. Number four, starting many things but not finishing many things. Number five, not giving strategies long enough to mature. Number six, having unrealistic expectations. Number seven, comparing our results to other people when we don't know their story and we end up depositioning and depedestalizing and demotivating ourselves unnecessarily. Number eight, the grass is greener syndrome. So there are, what, about 12 ways to cure yourself of this. It's so number one, understand that this is a normal experience. Don't beat yourself up about it. Most entrepreneurs um, go through it. In fact, people like Dyson and Branson and all the people you perceive to be really successful, they've failed in dozens of ventures. They still have the shiny penny syndrome to this day. So it makes us an entrepreneur. There's a lot of people saying, oh, it's really bad, or all oh, these course junkies out there, or all oh, these failures. No, failure is a part of success. Okay, so I created a 70, 20, 10 model to balance these opposing forces. 70% of your time on the main thing, 20% of your time on the secondary thing, 10% of your time on your future thing, your researching thing, your tertiary strategy. Uh, and then what you do to build, to go from three income streams to six income streams is you master your 70, might take one, three or five years, you systemize it, you leverage it, you outsource it, then you can park it like I did with buy to let properties, for example, like I did with HMOs, like I did with commercial property, because, you know, I've been doing that many years and I have partners and teams and companies that manage those. So I can then build the training businesses and then I can build my personal brand and then I can get into cryptos and everything else. So if you follow my work, you know, you can see that I've done it. And I've really had um, some challenges doing this over the years because of my propensity to get overexcited or to start something new. Um, and I just learned to say yes, but not now or yes. And with a partner. All right, then. Um, so doing too many things can be risky. Doing not enough things can be risky. If you just do buy to let, then it's been disrupted. If you do 15 strategies, then you're spread too thin. So number five, then, is you should always keep learning. You should always look at the future, the technology, the innovation, the disruption, but filter that down and manage it and try not to make sure then that you do 15 or 20 different things. I'd love to be in the coffee business. You know, I'd love to start my own initial coin offering. You know, I'd love to be in, a, in sort of a more techy business. There's loads of businesses I'd love to be in. I'd love to be in the cosmetics business. Oh, man. One of my best friends, his uh, wife, she's in the cosmetics business. I think Botox and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not into it, as you can see. But I think, you know, those businesses, the, the, the businesses where people spend money to look better, to feel better. I think they're great businesses. You know, there's some huge cosmetic businesses that are worth billions. But I know nothing about them. So I've just got to say, I just keep saying to myself, yeah, but not today. Yeah, but not today. Because if I say to myself, no, I kind of get, oh, I'd really like to do that. Oh, OK, that's a shame. I, I find it hard saying no. If I say, yeah, but later, then in six months when I'm, it's, it's still not time, I can go, yeah, but later. Yeah, but later. And I can kind of keep the dream alive. Sita has just shared, said I should have Rob coin. Mm, something to think about. All right, so maybe say, yeah, but not now, or yeah, but when I find the right partner. You know, I've been researching cryptos for years, but I didn't get into cryptos until I had the right partners, and I've got three mentors who've been helping me. Uh, and, and otherwise, I would have got in too early. I would have got distracted too early. Okay, then, number five was uh, most strategies work if you make them work. So make them work, work at them to make them work. It's not the strategy or the course provider or the mentor or the coach, you know, or what you learned that was broken, unless it's a scheme or a scam. It's just that you didn't make it work. You know, if anyone can do it, you can do it. All right, then you must give strategies long enough to mature. You know, you've got to plant the roots to get the shoots to bear the fruits. OK, you should systemize or leverage or outsource or hire in a strategy uh, and, and make it run itself before you take on another one. Never compare yourself to others and their apparent success unless for motivation and inspiration. 
The more clear you are on your goals, your vision, your purpose and your outcomes, the more you'll focus on what you're already doing and you won't get veered off by new shiny penny things. Let me show you the shiny penny again. Here's the shiny gold penny. Or get derailed by critics. Because here's another thing. You start something, you think it works, then it gets critics. And you go, oh, have I made a bad decision? You know, I, I, does it actually work? Uh, and, and, you know, like, the thing is, if you're not clear on what you're doing, other people's p opinions and perceptions and, um, you know, critiques will derail you. You're more emotionally susceptible to going off track. Oh, that opinion's right. Oh, that opinion's right. Oh, that opinion's right. Because you're not sure on who you are and what you're supposed to do. When you're more clear on your vision, your purpose, your mission, your strategies, your goals and your outcomes, you don't get derailed, derailed by other people as easily. I think if you have PAs, VAs, managers, staff, outsourcing and leverage, you're able to grow quicker. So if you want to achieve more in less time, that's the way to do it, not to spread yourself too thin. And then things take time, but not a lifetime, to build, grow, develop and mature. So hopefully you found this episode useful. Uh, if you're listening on the Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast, make sure you're in the Disruptive Entrepreneurs community on Facebook. Sorry, I'm spitting my words at the moment. I've got a bit of man flu. Uh, and then if you're watching live on the video somewhere or a recording of the video, make sure you're listening to the Disruptive Entrepreneur audio podcast. Uh, as of late, I've started to do content only on the podcast or content only on the video. And I rarely now uh, mix the two. So you get unique content on my Disruptive Entrepreneur audio podcast. You can listen anywhere in the world on your earphones or you just need a phone in the podcast app on iTunes or uh, an account on Stitcher, which is free. Podcasts are way easier to listen to than people realise and they're life changing. So make sure you listen if you're watching and you come and interact with us. I just looked at my microphone like you're looking at me uh, in the Disruptive Entrepreneur community if you listen in one of the 190 countries, but you're not engaging with our community. All right, thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. <laughs>